had so many. I got a little video yesterday. I don't know if I can even play it. Uh, from just people amazed with what we're doing and what's happening to them. The team of doctors that um, now are years into it after practicing medicine for 40 plus years, this is their go-to first. That has always been the goal, you know, is to first do no harm and uh, to have all these brilliant doctors in my office here that's where all you know, training on on the equipment uh, and even taking it to a further level. Um, I'm excited about the future that uh, we're really going to change the face of medicine as you know it today into a non-drug, non-invasive world that has a 90% success rate in the reduction of chronic pain and disease, you know, and improve health care quality and lower health care costs. And that vision is uh, becoming more and more clear. So with that, I'll open it up to uh, Dr. Mike Rankin, Jr. His father's another excellent naturopath and doctor that are doing, that are stepping outside of the boundaries and, and really helping people. And um, it's just exciting to hear all these testimonials these days after it only takes 34 years to become an overnight success. January 6th, it'll be 34 years that I've been involved now and it was like gum on my shoe that I couldn't shake it off. It just kept following me around. I said, I'm a stunt man. I'm not a doctor. Leave me alone. But um, now it really, uh, everything in Dubai is on schedule. So we've got a horse running tomorrow uh, for a quarter of a million. And the, the, these horses down there, they, Declan says he, he can't train them hard enough. He says they come back, they're barely breathing. One one other trainer said, I don't I don't think you're running that horse hard enough. And he goes, the stopwatch doesn't lie. And he holds up the stopwatch and goes, look at his times. <laughs> and the horse isn't breathing. So and that's the other next, next step too is to is to uh, because the horse racing is all coming our way. Down in Dubai, you don't bet. There's no drugs, you know, the horses run clean. And that's what's got to happen to stop all of these uh, these broken bones because the combination of butte and Lasix creates a porcelain bone that shatters. It doesn't fracture. It blows up. So when we stop drugging these horses and and take the whip out of the out of the jockey's hands so that they keep both hands on the reins and don't start whipping these horses, everybody's going to have a whole lot better view of uh of horse racing because if not they don't make these changes it's going to end so with that i'll turn it over to dr mike rankin and some of the exciting testimonials that he's presenting so hopefully by within the next few weeks we should have at least five mds also with their five case studies so we're going to have you know Many, many, many case studies um, that people can look through and um, and see that um, you know, yeah, we, we're we're doing what we say we can do. Yeah. Go ahead, well, Mike. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Mike Rankin Jr. here. I've been uh, running my dad's clinic. I uh, started three years ago this month, and uh, just a few months after that, I started my natural path degree because, you know, it's the coolest job ever. Getting to see miracles all the time is super fun. Um, uh, I do have a lot of training with Dr. Lee Cowden as well, um, but we started using the uh, Equiscope. I, you know, I, I was just thinking about this, John, you know, you were a uh, we were talking the other day and you're like, uh, your skeptics are often your biggest supporters. Well, I definitely went into this, you know, kicking and screaming against my will, uh, because we were a remote practice, you know, at the time and, uh, in, and already doing such amazing things with pain, but this just changed everything. I mean, we've, uh, you know, the, there's really nothing you can't put to this, uh, and, and it won't help so far as I found, I mean, I have yet to, I tell people if they don't, if I don't reduce their pain by a minimum of 30%, then they don't have to pay me. And so far I've worked on, I don't know, 80, a hundred people, maybe in the last six or seven months since I've had my office open. And I had one guy uh, tell me I only dropped it like 10 or 15%. Uh, so he threw me 20 bucks and left and I kept him there for an hour and a half. I couldn't believe it. But uh, he wrote me a few days later and said, Hey, uh, 
I need to pay for that session. My pain went away a couple of days later and uh, I want to bring my wife in, you know? So it's just been one thing after another. So uh, I know I've got like six uh, cases to go through and some of them are kind of intricate. So Angela, if you want to go ahead and start our slides, we can go ahead and start working through some of these. Uh, this young lady uh, has actually become a dear friend of mine. She's 41 years old, uh, has been a nurse, registered nurse here, uh, working with kids mostly uh, in kind of chronic illness uh, units for about 18 years or so now, maybe closer to 20. Uh, she's been dealing with severe uh, anxiety, depression, and migraines since the age of eight. Um, they, you know, and then, uh, well, the migraines really picked up speed, she says, uh, around puberty. Um, but, uh, at the time, um, when she came in to see me, I mean, she, she has days where she will stay home from work, you know, a couple days at a time, uh, just kind of in tears or just an overall feeling of sadness, you know, is how she would describe it to me. Uh, and she has been working with, you know, doctor after doctor. She's had one particular, uh, psychiatrist she'd been working with for 15 years. When she came to me, she was on three different types of drugs for sleep. Uh, two different drugs for depression and uh, one drug for an emergency drug for anxiety, a benzodiazepine, and then I can't remember the uh, name of the emergency medication for migraines when they would start to come on. And they really would just be blinding, you know, some and, uh, uh, IV uh, magnesium, high dose IV magnesium bags would uh, help sometimes in an emergency situation, you know, but those, you know, get really costly really fast and they only really work for, you know, that particular time. They didn't do anything to stem them. She uh, steroids from 18 to 19 when she moved into her um, uh, new part of the hospital, they installed all this Wi-Fi everywhere. And we have kind of deduced, just she and I together, that that's really when they picked up speed and she was having to stay home from work. I mean, literally half of her days. Uh, the last, and, and, and even before that, it was about a third of her days. Uh, she would literally have to stay home. Uh, and she was already doing all the right things. You know, she was uh, no dairy, no sugar, no grains. She really watched the amount of alcohol she took in. She might drink like once a month because, you know, it would bring on some migraines, but she figured drink every now and then she was getting them anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, she just, you know, she kept a diary. God bless her. She knows exactly how many percentage of days she was, you know, all the barometric pressure changes. Uh, she didn't notice that any particular diet or anything would uh, impact that as well. And again, she's been through probably 10 or 20 doctors, 15 or 20 doctors at least. Uh, uh, cystic acne uh, popped up uh, several years ago. She believes that was tied to, uh, you know, the steroids. Um, so that popped up, you know, it was kind of a big deal for her, uh, for most ladies, you know, never had a pimple in her life and all of a sudden. And then uh, her low blood sugar, it literally would get so low, she just pretty much walked around with a protein bar, a protein shake in her pocket all the time. I tried to talk her into coming for a little while and uh, maybe, I don't know, a month or two. And uh, she finally, she was at the tail end of like a three day migraine and I finally get her to, get her, got her to come in. And uh, we did do uh, ear clips, I did a headband, and then I did uh, uh, thyroid to pelvis and uh, walked her through the standard, uh, you know, the, the 0 0.5, uh, 2 0.5, 5, 10, and 40, uh, just a standard frequency for a 12 second stims. And literally it was, I mean, it wasn't 10 minutes later and her headache was gone. I continued to do some systemic work on her and I sent her out the door and uh, she proceeded after just that first one, if you can go ahead and next slide, please. Um, just that first one, she had gone over, uh, I think it was like two and a half or three weeks or something. Uh, she texted without a single headache and that had not happened in like eight years. So that was obviously pretty exciting, but she called me just a couple days later just to tell me, like, she just, you know, she's like, I didn't want to, you know, uh, you know, jinx anything or, or think, you know, maybe it was just in my head, but I just feel overall different. She was just happy. Um, so we also, you know, we did some, uh, she had a lot of toxicity. Uh, so we did do some lymphatic. I use uh, uh, the device for that as well. We did some other detox therapies. Uh, and uh, she, you know, um, so now we're at, uh, she is down to her last, I think, quarter dose of that effects or it was such a high dose. We've really had to take our time weaning off of that. She's done that, you know, with the doctor who prescribed it to her. Uh, and uh, she hasn't taken a benzo, uh, not one single pill since we started. That was about four months ago. 
Uh, and uh, at the end, it should be by the end of this month, she will be drug free, no sleeping pills, no benzos, no antidepressants, nothing, no migraine medications, hopefully. She's had now, uh, it has been nine weeks. I uh, just talked to her a couple days ago and she has had one migraine. So that, that hasn't happened, I, I believe she told me, I don't think that's happened since she was a child. So that's obviously a very exciting time. And it was really funny when we were talking at the end, uh, just kind of when we were doing a testimonial and kind of tracking all of these things that it, because there was so much to deal with, uh, she goes, oh, hey, by the way, uh, I didn't mention this, but I had chronic back pain for like the last five years. At the, you know, she works like four 10-hour uh, shifts in a row uh, and then has three days off. And by the end of that, you know, second and third day, the fourth day especially, she was really kind of limping along. And her wrist and elbow all got better as well. So that's, that was a... Uh, I was one of the first ladies I ended up working with. That's, she was one of the longest it took, but there were so many drugs to get off. So we can move on to the next one. Uh, this young lady, just love her. Um, I know her husband for like 10 years, and uh, I've reached out to her a couple times because she kept putting up these notes on Facebook that she has been through a minimum of 20 doctors over the last eight years. She was perfectly healthy and so about eight years ago. Uh, she's uh, To look at her, you think she's in great shape. I mean, she has the face and body of a model. She just, you know, she's very vibrant when she's not in a lot of pain, uh, has a great sense of humor, you know, but over the last eight years ago, all of a sudden, you know, it was, it, it came right around the time they made a move as a family, uh, but she ended up with this all over body pain that was uh, really uh, concentrated in her joints, which made it walk hard to walk. Uh, she has four kids, you know, it's, it's the, the pain was so bad. It was literally, it would sit around, uh, to, um, you can, I mean, she'd tell me it was never below a six, usually sat around an eight, but other days she would literally, she would, I've seen videos of this. She tried to document a lot of this stuff and she would lose all speech and motor function. I mean, it was just the day she came into my office, she was kind of limping along, hunched over, you know, uh, and, and it was only at a six that day, you know? Um, so she's been on and off, uh, everything from Vicodins, Oxys, fentanyl patches, none of this stuff works. It makes her terribly sick. Um, you can go ahead on, uh, oh, and she was misdiagnosed with cancer a couple of times too. Um, because her thyroid was so swollen. You're going to see a couple pictures here in a minute that are pretty shocking. Um, yeah, all over body pain, uh, lose the speed. Oh, she also developed cystic acne. I mean, really girl had never had a pimple in her life, you know, not even when she went through puberty. And all of a sudden, just her whole face, you know, was covered in this stuff. You know, I got pictures of this, uh, you'll see here. Brain fog would set in, um, you know, uh, she would have trouble just remembering if her kids had eaten, you know? So it was, uh, she just was kind of at her last rope and she was really, she told me many times she was preparing to die. Uh, it looked, her thyroid was still swollen. You'll see in this picture, it looked like she swallowed a golf ball and she could really not digest hardly anything. So she came to my office. She's been in pain every single day of her life for eight years, never below like a five or a six. And she popped off my table in about 35 or 40 minutes in zero pain for the first time. Uh, she, I mean, she immediately pretty much burst into tears. You know, I mean, she was in tears when she came in and then tears after, but for a whole new reason, thank you, God. Uh, we also did some, uh, I did a lymphatic clearing on her the next time she came in a few days later. She actually did stay out of pain just that first session. I believe it was for about a month and a half. And then uh, Thanksgiving came along and she ended up, you know, crashing out on the diet, getting into a fight with her husband, which, you know, a lot of this emotional stuff we've tied to her pain. But she pops right back in the office. She's on the table 20 minutes. If that, I just keep her on that long. You know, uh, but most of the time her pain is gone in just a few minutes. Okay, pain stay away for it was just about a, under a month that first time. Uh, six, no, cystic acne, you'll see here. Uh, if you see the left picture, it's her thyroid. You know, if you notice how swollen that is. And then that is about three days later, okay, on the right-hand side. And you can go, so uh, this, this picture kind of got a little hazy, I guess, on the, uh, uh, put up here on the slide. But you can see, obviously, she's got severe and it's scarring acne, it's, it's really deep stuff. That is two and a half weeks later. She has no makeup on, she's out walking in the park, as you can kind of see in the background there. Um, that is after one spinal stimulation and one lymphatic clearing. 
Uh, no acne has come back. Not even the scarring was still there. Literally, there's she's wearing no makeup. That's what she told me. And you can see it's a close-up picture. You can almost see some scar. She's pretty happy. Pain doesn't come back. Uh, some of her chemical, uh, chemical sensitivities have died down as well. This one is severe migraine attacks from 2008 to 2019. Uh, at least once a day, they would come and go. Uh, sometimes they'd only last for a couple hours. Other days, they'd last for days. She saw a couple of the best neurologists around, uh, did a couple of MRIs on her, conclusive. They could not find anything. She was trying to deal with this for years. She spent a lot of money on a lot of doctors. Uh, Topamax and Vicodin. Topamax was causing speech delays, 30 to 60 seconds. She runs two businesses that she owns. She's highly motivated, very, very driven. Uh, so, and, and talks all day. I mean, she, she sells her business all day. So speech delays looking, you know, like she had had a stroke was obviously not too beneficial for her business. She tried all the diet. She tried all the allergy testing, parametric pressure changes. I mean, she, you know, just everything short of keeping an actual diary like my nurse buddy. She did stop taking those medications for headaches, ironically. And six months later, they stopped coming daily. They were more sporadic, about 10 to 15 a month. Uh, but they could last for several days. She came to me because she had a really severe migraine that was going on 30 days and she was unable to work. You know, I mean, it, it had died down a little bit to a, like a pain level of six by the time she finally got into me. Uh, that was it. And she came in and she had a really serious light sensitivity. Her vision was not too clear. Her vision wasn't too clear in general anyway. Uh, I did a standard uh, headband and ear clip. She didn't have a lot of time. You know, and I was just like, come on in, let's let's just see what we can do. And literally, I mean, it was 10 minutes. I just ran her through one quick cycle, and I think I, I yeah, I did headband and ear clips, and that was it. I think I might have did uh, mode two, like on 10, and then back over for like another uh, low intensity, just kind of calm it down. And that was it. Her headache was gone just like that. She tried to pay me. I had, she was a friend from high school I hadn't seen in 25 years, so I just said, you know, do a Facebook post for me, tag me on it, you know, and tell everyone what happened, you know, and, and so she did. And she uh, wrote that on her way home, she noticed that her vision had dramatically improved. She was seeing uh, street signs from like 100 yards out where it would have been 20 or 30 yards before, before she could notice them. Uh, so that was kind of like a happy little accident. And I've done some other things with sight. One of my other, uh, one of these towards the end is pretty cool too. Uh, so yeah, last three months, she has had one headache that has not happened ever, not one time in the last 11 years. And it was really cool. She came into my office to, to fix her shoulder uh, about a month, month and a half later or something. So she sits down after I fixed her shoulder, you know, got that to zero pain in like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something at that. And uh, we're just kind of chatting now. And she says, you know, listen, I, I want you to know, I've been telling everyone about you, everyone about the Equiscope, I, you know, like people I don't even know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, thanks. You know, she's like, you know, you, you changed my whole life. I don't know how I'll ever re be able to repay you. I, I was kind of taken aback. And I said, and that's when she informed me that in fact, it had been every single day of her life, a blinding migraine for 11 years. I, I just, I can't imagine. I talked to her uh, two days ago, I guess, after I sent this thing, and she did get another headache. She is coming in tomorrow to uh, get it taken care of. She wanted to come in today and couldn't make it. So that was one in like two months, two or maybe even three now it's coming up on. As opposed to every day, I think that's a pretty dramatic improvement. Oh, this lady's fun. Um, <laughs> cranky, cranky lady. And, and so young and pretty and, and then really, really funny. We were Facebook friends. I didn't really know her or anything. And, and then she put up some message. She goes, hey, if anybody wants to know why I'm pissed off all the time, it's because I got this effing pain going down my leg. Like, and, and I keep spending all this money and I've seen chiropractors and acupuncturists and all these medical doctors. I've tried fentanyl, oxy, like all these huge, you know, painkillers, which she had a, a drug and alcohol issue already, so she wanted to get away from that. And, and just, you know, knows she that shouldn't be taking that stuff. And so she was pretty desperate, and I reached out to her, and she was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'll come in and try it, you know. And I was like, look, you don't even have to pay. You know, just if I if I do something, do a video testimonial for me. So uh, I got her to come in. Sciatic nerve pain running down her leg and lower back. See, 15 years, uh, never blow a four, usually around a six. And then uh, a few days before I had, she had come in to see me or she had made that post, 
Uh, she had been in bed for several days, uh, as I recall at that point. And that would happen at least once a month, sometimes more. Uh, she had also, I think it was a steroid shot, pretty terrible irony here, a uh, steroid shot to help her sciatic pain. And they, I don't know if they hit some kind of nerve or something, but she got some stabbing, like she said it was like a hot poker hitting her in the thigh. Funnily enough, uh, just did a, a standard protocol. If everyone on here who has an equoscope does not have an acupuncture doll, get that today. That Amazon sells one, fill out your app as soon as we're done here and order. It's 30 bucks. 98 out of 100, not 9 out of 10, 98 out of 100 times, you tell them to take their finger and stick it on the epicenter of the pain, they're going to land it on an acupuncture point. And then you can kind of just track where that line goes and start putting a place where the weaknesses are. Uh, you have to, if you have the ability, you can muscle test that uh, easily in any number of different ways. Or, you know, the old old uh, trusty method, just gently press around on those uh, points. Now do press gently because they, like there's one, you know, it's right on the side of the butt there. Uh, it's a main gallbladder point and it's always connected to, I mean, 95% of the time, if they've got a sciatic problem, go to press on that point and if it lights them up, it, you you found your where you're gonna put your first plate. So I'll usually stick a little two inch plate right on that plate on that point on their butt there, you know, just underneath their underwear or pants or whatever. And then I did a spinal on her, and then I'll put some ear clips on people as well, just to kind of knock out two birds, you know, as we go along. Zero pain in either the sciatic nerve uh, or, and in, in, interestingly enough, the sciatic pain had been there since she was like tw I think 12 or 15 years old. But the injury had happened, I think it was like six years ago. So the gallbladder pain, or the, the sciatic pain, which I believe is tied to her gallbladder, I got rid of, I mean, literally one cycle. It was gone. Just like that, 15 years of pain, out. But that, that injury, uh, where that was, that took me about another 20 minutes, uh, just doing a, a solid bullseye probe on that, and we finally got it to go away. Uh, I worked on mode two and mode one with that. So, um, you know, she doesn't have to accost her kids to massage her leg an hour a day anymore. I'm sure they're all happy about that. And uh, I will say she's not quite as cranky. So uh, 33 years old, she was sold by some doctor to, she told him she wanted to have children. And they're like, oh, you know, we're doing this procedure to make it really easier for ladies or, you know, just to, these days who might be having trouble. We're going to clean out your fallopian tubes. So uh, they did that procedure, and uh, about a day later, this really perfectly healthy person, just gorgeous, she's a, a Reiki master, craniosacral certified, she's got probably a half a dozen, you know, natural medicine certifications under her belt. You know, she's the, the go-to for all her friends and family when anything comes up, and she helps them fix them, you know? So when this came up for her, you know, she just, her, the next day, uh, her brain fog set in, um, she just wasn't feeling right, you know, she had a lot of abdominal pain where they did the procedure, uh, they used some kind of iodine solution, uh, she did a lot of research, I mean, she's a big, big time researcher, really into the chemistry of things too, and so she ended up finding some kind of forum where there was another couple thousand people on there, who evidently this is kind of a common problem, uh, with this particular iodine solution. Uh, she told me that about a week and a half later, uh, she woke up actually paralyzed. Now, this was kind of a late addition to me. I had to rework some of my case studies. So I kind of put her in at the last minute, uh, other than this blurry vision thing, because uh, I just had to tell this story. But she had, uh, besides the severe brain fog, really, really bad memory lapses. Uh, one morning, about a week and a half later after this procedure, she woke up and she was whole body paralyzed. So that's a fun little side effect that happened. Um, so, and her fiance was away at work. So it literally lasted for hours before she could even move and call someone and, and, and had someone take her to the emergency room. Uh, they of course couldn't find anything wrong. And she proceeded to go through 12 different doctors, six of the best specialists in town. Uh, she was calling doctors all over the country, all over the world, really just trying to track some down someone that could help her with some of these symptoms. I mean, she had a longer list of neurological symptoms from uh, shooting pains, uh, felt like she was being electrocuted. She felt like she had uh, bugs crawling all through her brain and neck, paranoia, anxiety, some severe depression set in, and none of this was her. First day she came in, I had to close all the blinds and she would just look terrible, but she left 
feeling, I think she said like 70% better. This is going back several months now, but um, over the course of the next two treatments, we had done some lymphatic on her. Oh, and so I'm sorry, for the second treatment she had come in, I, I said, you know, because we had done some spinal, I did ear clips and, uh, and some other stuff. Uh, I worked on her abdominal where she had some pain, which we all got to go away. She was feeling great, a lot of trust built up there. She came back in for another one. And we're trying to like, so, you know, she's like still the brain fog and, you know, those, it's really all the other symptoms below the neck were gone in one session. Okay. And then literally like eight or 10. Uh, but this, what I, what I put her in for, this is just so damn funny. So I was like, well, let's do some brain stuff since all the stuff below the neck. So I put a headband on her, put some ear clips. Oh no, no, I, I didn't, I started to put a headband on her, but instead I was like, you know what? Let's muscle test. So I get around to the front, no, no, I get to the back and I, I literally lurched forward. I'd never gotten a response that strong. So I put two plates right back here in the O1, O2 spots, if you know anything about brain mapping, right at the occiput, which controls vision, by the way. So I put two plates on there, little one inch plates. You guys, I, I swear to you, this is true. She's sitting right next to me. I can see her and I can touch her. She's staring out the window. I hit start on a 0.5 frequency, like 200 intensity, maybe a hundred. Not one second goes by. She goes, <gasps> like she gasped and throws her hand up over her mouth and in a panic. And I was like, oh, is it is it too intense? Are you feeling shocked? She's like, no, something happened. I'm like, what is it? She was like, she just kept repeating that. Something happened, something happened. And I was like, what? And she goes, I can see. And I, I've never seen her wear glasses and I do iridology and I, I look in her eyes a half a dozen times and I've never seen contacts. And I was like, well, could you not before? I was laughing, you know? And she goes, well, Mike, you don't understand. She looks at me, she got this look of total panic on her face. She goes, it was like somebody took a squeegee and had moved it slowly across my eyes. So slow, in fact, that her left eye, half of it was clear and the other half wasn't as it moved across. <laughs> so anyway her vision cleared up literally like that I, I moved it through the other cycles for like three minutes maybe and uh and that was that you know she left she was feeling great a lot of the head stuff cleared up i mean we, we got about 98 percent of the way there and then it's just slowly kind of been progressing we did some other detox stuff as well but uh it was all echoscope and on this particular girl for sure it's been about five or six months now and you know never an issue with the vision again uh jamie is a young woman man you should look at her she looks like a track athlete you know she takes great care of herself she's doing like colon cleanses several times a year she's doing lymphatic therapy seven times a year uh eats fantastic uh, gets physical exercise, you know, just look at her and she's 41. She looks, she's got the body of like a 20 year old track star. Um, but she's had this, uh, really bad neck pain that since high school, and then this upper, uh, kind of between the shoulder back pain, uh, picked up around 2011. And as I'm, as I'm going through, and again, you just take the finger and have them stick it. You guys, if you're not doing this, everybody please on this, if you have an echoscope, you're not doing this already. This is the easiest trick in the world. Index finger on the epicenter of the pain, what energy line it's connected to, I guarantee you, they're gonna stick their finger right on the acupuncture point, right? We're not performing acupuncture here, but we can certainly work with the energy system of the body. Why not? We've known about it for a few thousand years, right? Pain was about an eight, you know, on average. Sometimes it would hit a, a 10 if she would, you know, work out too hard or move her neck in the wrong way, but never below a six. And again, this has been going on since she was in high school. You know, we're at over 20 years now. Uh, couldn't get her arm above here, you know, just, just above shoulder level. Um, and again, her being, you know, really active, that, that limited so much stuff she could do. She was really in sports. And I did a plate on the, and then, you know, it was interesting. I found, and, in, in, uh, you know, she said, it's in the neck. And I was like, okay, so it, it connects to the neck and then it, it zigzags down. Uh, I think it's a, it's a large intestine or one of those that zigs down uh, the back. And so I just put a plate on wherever the sorest points were, and then one down at the end of her hand. I got her pain down below a one, first try out of the gate. It was about, I don't know, 50 minutes, 50 minute session. That's about how usually long I keep people in there. So she walked out nearly in pain free. First time, totally ecstatic. She said it was about a week and a half later, it started to creep back, not nearly as bad as it was. So she just came on back in. And you know, this is a 20 year problem. 
you know, as we all know, it's, you know, some of them are one and done. I mean, I've seen it, but, you know, 20 year problem. Uh, we're on about the fourth session now and her pain does not go above the three anymore. And most, and she has full range of motion, by the way. Uh, the pain in the middle of her back has gone down dramatically. She was having trouble holding a charge and uh, something uh, you, uh, you were, either Lisa or John told me that, you know, if their back's out of alignment, guys, if they're having a, tro uh, having a hard time holding a charge like over and over, if you have a chiropractor, good chiropractor, align them, uh, that, that could very well be the problem. And it turns out that likely was a big chunk of her issue because I got her to uh, go get you know, aligned, she came back and she's holding a charge great now. The pain is pretty much non-existent. She did, uh, she keeps telling me she's getting these, uh, like little, she, she's noticing like these pops and, and like she'll move her arm in a certain direction and it will, like, it feels like it moves back into place. Like it's been out of place this whole time. So along with, I guess, you know, the chiropractor and uh, the stuff, because it's not the chiropractor that's popping her back in. It's after she does Equiscope, she, you know, over the next day or two, she notices these little changes. And her chiropractor, by the way, who's known her for many years, said, hey, what's going on with your posture? <laughs> so this guy's been playing a uh, 40-year-old male. He was a ranked tennis player since he was like 12 years old. You know, his parents were lugging him around state to state, playing all these tournaments. Very, very talented, but he played a lot of tennis. So we had, uh, you know, this sh the shoulder has been kind of coming and going over the years and just kind of progressively getting worse to a point where he is, again, we're right about here, you know, just shoulder level. He hasn't been able to get, so no serving for this guy, you know? I mean, some days the pain would get down to like just a three, you know, so he would go and just kind of play a gentle, gentle game of tennis because it's a true passion of his uh, and just can't imagine not playing it. But you know, the next couple of days after, it's, he knows he's going to pay a severe price. I put a plate on the top, I put one on the underarm, one up here, one in the back. I got it next to nothing with that alone in about 10 minutes, and I finished it up with a wide probe. And, you know, he's got that look on his face because he came in, he's a friend of mine, I hadn't seen it in about six years. He was like, yeah, listen, man, he straight up told me. He's like, listen, man, I don't believe in any of this crap, but I haven't seen it in years, so I want to come see it. You know, he's kind of a gregarious, loud guy. And so he comes in, he's like, all right, man, all right, I'll let you do it. You know, we were just heading out to lunch on my, and I just asked him, hey, you got any pain? He's like, well, you know, as you mentioned it, I got this thing for many years. And so he sat down and literally we, less than maybe 20 minutes and uh, full range of motion and pain was at a zero. Literally said he felt brand new. So now he's out playing tennis. Uh, pain did come back. I mean, it, it'll come back very slightly, you know, he'll like a one or a two if because he's going out and he's playing tennis again. Uh, and he hasn't come back to see me because, you know, he's lazy and runs a multi-million dollar business, uh, lazy about taking care of himself, uh, and runs a, a large business. So, but he's, uh, he wants to kick up his game again. So he's planning on coming back in. That's all I got for you people. Those are, I mean, well, those are really guys though. If anybody's considering getting Equiscope, I mean, you can't lose. It's, I mean, I, I could speed talk for the next 10 hours. And this is just like a half a dozen of the fun things that I've done, you know, in the last five, six months, I've had this clinic of my own. So anyway, that's all I got. So if anyone has questions, you should be able to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Hey, this is your pops. Hey, uh, Michael, what, what was it you told me when I got my first echoscope? Oh, well, uh, we're going to do five years getting our money back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, for the record, I've apologized profusely many times. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Michael, is that you've been using it a far less amount of time than I have, but I seem to be calling you all the time to get tips and hints. And, and well, I work, on more, I work on more people you know, in a shorter amount of time. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing. The, the thing with the bilateral spinal and uh, and doing the laser detox stuff has put a, a new face on on our whole practice. I mean, it's really stunning. Yes, this is Kim Robinson. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hi. Great. Thanks. Congratulations on your degree. Um, Thank you. I I'm really curious about the vision. How do you think that would would, would if you were to find a patient like that again, would you, what would you do as a protocol? 
I would put those plates right back on the same points. Okay. Is it, you know, we do a lot of brain mapping in our office, so I happen to be aware that that's the part of the brain that controls vision. Uh, now, I did not put that on there. I was unaware of her vision problem. Right. So I just put it on there because I was muscle testing her on where the best points were to put it. And when I got around to the back side, I, n I have not gotten maybe one of the time in my life that strong of a reaction. I literally, I bumped into her. And she, so she looks at me and I was like, okay, I think we found our spots. So right. anybody with any vision problems, I'd go straight there first if I were you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Casey, and um, I'm on Laszlo Nameless account. But I was really blown away. You're talking about this woman who you gave two systematic, full systematic protocols. I'm fairly new to the Equiscope, and I saw her cystic acne, like, almost yeah. completely disappear. Yeah. Um, and I've gotten, I've gotten acne to go away on several other people, like a half a dozen at least since then. Okay, just doing the spinal, bilateral yeah. spinal. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what I, it's not a bilateral spinal. I'm because that's on either side with two probes going up, right? I'm okay. just putting the plate right at the at the base of the skull, and then I'm working. I mean, it's really best to go down. You know, you put gel dots all the way up the spine. It's best to start the coccyx, but that's a pretty intimate point. So, you know, depending on who you're working on, maybe you want to start at like the top of the crack of the butt. You know, is where I do with a lot of people. <clears throat> and how long do you usually work on the patient? Do you do like? I'll do. Uh, I mean, I, I do fifty minute appointments, fifty minutes to an hour. But I'm pretty generous if I don't have anybody after I'll work on them until their pain's gone, or at least a minute. But most of the time, it's gone, you know, in well under an hour. And then I'll just keep them there just to give them their money's worth doing systemic stuff, you know. Uh, now, if uh, that spinal stimulation, I, I don't have any proof of this other than the results that I'm seeing in my common sense assumption that it is really doing some dramatic things for correcting hormones in people. I believe this because not only am I getting a bunch of acne to go away in both men and women, uh, but I have had, I don't know, three or four women tell me now uh, that they had, like one, the, one woman, the first one that called me about her menstrual cycle was like four days later. Uh, said, hey, you know, I don't know if this is a coincidence, but I just had a period for the first time in 10 months. And uh, so, you know, and I've, and I've had uh, people who are on birth control who are only supposed to have the period every three to four months and now having regular periods, you know? I mean, and some of these ladies aren't too happy about it, but, uh, you know, it's how you're supposed to work, so. Michael, when you're, when you're working on uh, the governing vessel, Yes. You should know, you know, about our equiscope, and it's it's a neural response device, which means once we excite that tissue, we're capturing the behavior of the autonomic nervous system, both sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic is the gas pedal, and the parasympathetic is kind of the brake. But you're harmonizing the two, so one's not getting in control. And that's what's setting the body up to do the healing. You know, it's all about sympathetic resonance and that's you know sympathetic resonance is without it healing doesn't occur so you know in standard western medicine they're not looking at you know at deep meditative states and that's why you can see a yogi monk stick a 20 gauge needle through his arm and not bleed because he's got control of his sympathetic nervous system the equiscope if you look up its fda registration it's registered as a it's a class two medical device, but it's also registered as a electromyograph diagnostic. So, you know, for all of you that are out there, this device is, the technology behind this device is simply magnificent in what it's doing. But what it's doing is as soon as it excites that tissue, now that's a mathematical signature. That's measurable on how your autonomic nervous system responds to that excitation. And that, you know, the miracle here is the human body. You get them on the right diets, you add a little current, and you're going to watch miracle after miracle. I was talking to Dr. Delaney. Um, you know, as you all know, Delaney, you know, he's been using the instrument now for 40 years. And here's a doctor that's practiced medicine for 40 years, board-certified cardiologist, board-certified internal medicine, board-certified geriatric, functional medicine. You know, I can go on and on about Delaney. And he's going, this is what I do. Ever since you've had this, brought this into my office, this is what I do. I go to this. This is my go-to first. 
So to be with my see doctor, if she's, if she's still on there, Dr. Catherine Wilner, you know, who's been my friend for many, many years back in the day, who's a, who's a world-renowned neurologist. So I see that she's on the call and listening. I, I haven't heard her speak up yet. If you just let the device communicate with the body, and, you know, it's like what, what uh, Dr. Rankin is saying. You look at a dermatome system, you look at what chakra, what um, acupuncture point channel or meridian directly up the spinal you know, the um, spiny process, that's the governing vessel all the way to the tip of the lip to the tip of the coccyx. So these are all things that, you know, and I mean, I've seen so many things over the 34 years. I mean, it's nice to hear everybody else is having the same type of results that I have, that they've had these problems for years and years. You can't just stick your finger in the light socket and get the right kind of current in your body, one big capacitor with 50 trillion little capacitors inside. And that device is looking for every single cell in your body is a little capacitor, it's a little battery. And on one side is positive, on the other side is negative. In the center is the dielectric, which is the lipid. And if the lipid starts getting challenged, then they start the positive starts leaking the negative or vice versa, which creates cellular inflammation. Then you got a cascade of events. So what the device does is find that cell that's got a little problem and goes, oh, not enough negative ions, pushes it through there. And as long as you got the right fuel in the body, the body goes, oh, good, I can heal myself now. So, you know, when you combine Chinese medicine and missile guidance chip technology and the device internally, weapons of mass destruction and communication, this is three things. It's got Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, which is Star Wars. It's got those Defense Department contractors behind part of the board. It's got the lie detector guys behind part of the board. It's got HARP, the High Alpha Aurora Project up in Alaska, you know, so... What I love is all these weapons that were basically used for mass destruction are now used for mass healing instead of instead of destruction. So, you know, we're about to make a, a big play now that now that we have devices in almost every state, and I can start to go back on the air, which I stopped all types of ABC, NBC, CBS affiliates that featured me in Hawaii. I stopped all that because I couldn't supply the demand, and now thankfully we're at that point. Things in Dubai are going amazingly well, um, you know, for some of our offshore devices that um, that have not yet made it through approvals here. But, um, you know, this is truly how the body operates. You're electrical before you're biochemical all day long, period. So I commend all of you guys on that, Michael, for doing the work that you're doing. Your father, who I heard speak up down there, he wanted to pick on you because... You told him not to buy the machine, and, and uh, you know, that was, uh, he... He did anyway, thank God. He did anyway behind your yeah. back. So father and son, you were mad at your dad because he did it, and now you're the biggest skeptic, became the biggest uh, promoter of, of, of what we're doing because now you see it. Every day, every day, all day, man. Hey, uh, for those of you who maybe weren't on the last one, where we uh, there's two things I want to bring up real quick, John, since you were talking about, like, you know, the energy distribution. Uh, I have, like, the newest and greatest, you know, all the buzzers and whistles, heart rate variability test in my uh, office. And so I pretty much run one on everyone when they come in to kind of check out how their energetics are. And, and a couple of the things that this uh, that you can check with this is um, like, you know, all the all the meridians, you know? And so I will do a uh, one on them before, and then I'll go do a spinal, just a spinal stimulation on them, mind you. And I'll come back and do a heart rate variability, and every single one of those meridians have jumped up anywhere from 100% to 2,000% for some people who are really on the low end who are pretty sick, you know? They might be in the single digits, and next thing you know, they're in the 80s or 90s out of 100, you know? Uh, so that's pretty awesome. I see that across the board every single time. It's just one of those tools I use in my office to show people what they're what what's happening uh, and to kind of guide me on, on where the weakest parts of their energy system are, you know? So that's a very useful tool like that. But for anybody who wasn't on last week for the brain maps, or last month, I mean, we did talk about some brain maps and I did uh, eight before and after brain maps on people with just ear clips. I did one with the protocol that's in the book, John, and then we, I know we talked about, I did, uh, uh, so I did four with the protocol in the book, and then I did uh, four with just 15 minutes on 0.5 with ear clips. 
And there was, there was improvement across everybody's brain in various forms and various areas, all different, of course. But one thing that, that struck everyone, including the, you know, the brain doc gurus that we sent these off to with 20 and 30 years experience between them, uh, had, uh, it was a 80 to 90% cleanup in the coherence factor, which is a communication between either too much or too little energy going back and forth in the brain. So when we see eight of them back to back before and after, uh, and, and pretty much it didn't really matter, John, by the way, if we did the protocol in the book or just the 15 minutes on ear clips, they pretty much came out the same way. You're able to systemically stimulate the body, the entire body in such a positive direction so fast, it, it's, it's unbelievable. It's an instantaneous rate of exchange. So as soon as you stimulate, it's an instantaneous rate of exchange, and then the device monitors and corrects the value of the changing quantities. So you wonder why these things occur so quickly. That's how the body reacts. You know, that's, that's all about the reaction, the excitation, and then how it responds. And that's what's measurable. That's the equation, and the device solves that equation every time body electric. And, the, and, the, and for anybody, when you're explaining it simply, in the elevator, as you're diagnosed with an EEG, an EKG, an EMG, look them in the eye and say, what's the E stand for? Uh, <laughs> electro. And how did they bring it back to life when you've got a big major heart attack? What do they do? Stick a needle in your heart? Not often. They, they do the paddles. The paddles. What is it? It's a defibrillator. Okay, so you're diagnosed electrically. You're brought back to life electrically. Why aren't you being treated electrically? Well, now you can be treated electrically. And that's the other people go, oh, I've never even really thought about that. You know, I never thought about uh, that. You know, that it makes sense. It's just common sense medicine. Before they start messing you up with all their drugs and all the stuff that's going to throw your electro, you know, magnetic system off for that short little high, that short little rush, and then you're left with a ton of shrapnel in your body that you have a very hard time eliminating. All dis ease is toxic response. If you remove the toxicity, you remove the response, which is just ease. John, when you mentioned uh, <clears throat> the experience I had with the echoscope that was really stunning, you know, we do a lot of the brain maps and brain training, but there's something very unique about the echoscope on the ear clips that I don't see with brain training as a general rule. We've got three or four different types of brain training equipment. In that regard, I was coming back from a trip where I'd taken the echoscope and I'll fly out to people's homes and work on it for several days if they can't travel. And I was coming back from that trip and somehow or another tangled up my feet in the, um, in the uh, cart for the luggage and all of my weight went down on my kneecap on a concrete floor. And as you can imagine, the, the pain of that was extraordinary, but I'm getting ready to get into a, an Uber they take it for a 50 mile, 50 mile uh, ride. I mean, yeah, 50 minute ride to the airport. And I'm trying to think what I'm going to do, right? So um, I have packed everything. I get to the airport and I get through security and I open up my echoscope praying that I had, I had plates in there. All I had was ear clips. So I'm sitting down by the gate. I open up the echoscope. I put it on the floor uh, in, the, in the lounge waiting for the plane. I had about an hour and a half. And I put the ear clips on. My knee by this time was bigger than a softball. And I, and I couldn't move it uh, because it had gotten so stiff. So I just sat there chatting with people around me, looking at me kind of strangely while I had these ear clips on. And I went through all the modes, uh, 0.5, 2.5, and 10, and 40. And by the time the plane uh, was calling people to board, my knee was normal. Just ear clips. Yeah. It, it was truly stunning. Truly stunning. We're seeing this all the time. If we'll do the ear clips, and Michael's the one who pointed out to me, <laughs> if we do the ear clips for no more than 15 minutes before we do many other types of procedures on people, we've got to get their brain engaged. And if we engage their brain, then everything else we do is, is going to be gravy after that. That, uh, uh, that thing with the spinal, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. It was such a simple change in procedure uh, by him putting that plate on the uh, brain at the base of the skull and then going down, Michael, uh, when you go down the spine, um, are you triggering the spine like um, each 
frequency for like three or four times or what? Yes, I do. I do three eight second simulations usually. And I'll put, depending on the size of the person, I'll put dot. Well, I mean, I just put dots about, you know, an inch and a half to two inches away from one another going up the spine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that all on mode one? Yes. Yes. I use mode one. Uh, now, if you've had like a back injury, then uh, I will use mode two, or if they're having trouble holding a charge, I will go over to mode two, run them through some frequencies, and pop them back over to one, and they'll usually hold a lot better that way. Got it. Thank you. You mentioned something, a chart or a, a app we should get that was $30. Could you please tell me what that was again? I'm in a little Chinese medicine shops. It's a little, you know, I, the essentials of Chinese medicine have, but when you look at the little doll, and it's got all the points on it. Then you can see anatomically, you know, exactly where the points in the channels and the meridians are all running. Um, they stand about, you know, they can get ones that are about two and a half feet tall, or there's smaller ones, but the ones that you really look at, that's what uh, I believe that's what you're talking about, wasn't it? So there's the doll, right? Um, that you, you know, they're about two feet tall. You can get them on Amazon for $30. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about this app, which is right there. You can see that blue and white yin and yang. Forty-five dollars will be the best investment you made. You can type in a symptom, go to that point. It'll it'll pull up the points for you and start putting plates there. Sorry, can you put it back in front of the camera again, please? I was That's just there. on my button. There it is, right there. Okay. Okay. It'll be the best forty-five bucks you spent. Yeah, the I um, I thought you were particularly talking about one with the brain acupuncture points when you were talking about the site and that but that's okay thank you no no huh those are brain mapping points yeah okay yeah the better you get with acupuncture i've always said this all along that's why i studied two years at the institute of oriental medicine points channels and meridians the better i got with placing a needle also some um you know if you can find anything on reinhard vol all of vol's diagrams you know reinhard vol was a medical doctor and he was the grandfather of electroacupuncture. So really the books for everybody out there is, you know, anything you can find on Vol, um, they're out of press, but you can find them you know, on all of Vol's points, um, the essentials of Chinese medicine, and then trigger points. Simmons and Trebell's, um, you know, the, the trigger point books, you know, and with those three books, you know, you've got tools to you know relieve all kinds of symptoms and you know the trigger points wherever you, I go to those trigger points all the time and that's one of our one of our chiropractors that's some of his his entire practice is based on just relieving the trigger points he's another guy that says if I don't drop your your pain by 30 percent don't pay me you know and how many people does that happen you know <laughs> you know, I think he had one or two in, in years and years that ever, you know, not dropped the pain syndrome. So, you know, I mean, when you have something that's kind of too good to be true, it's kind of too good to be true, but that's the way the body works. And now, you know, finally, we've got enough people out there that are doing the work that are, you know, and, and certainly we need more studies and more. Um, but, you know, case studies, I love them. They're all coming in. Uh, Dr. Matt Brock did some great case studies. MD, um, you know, Dr. Delaney, MD, Dr. Hart is, uh, I'm sure, you know, will have his studies in, Dr. Um, you know, these are all MDs, um, Dr. Phyllis uh, Gerber, MD, you know, hopefully I'll get Catherine Wilner, MD, to get some of her case studies in and what she's been doing with the device. She's had it for quite some time. But it's all these medical doctors that uh, Dr. Guillermo, I see, um, I've got Guillermo Ranas probably, um, the son on board, uh, but his father, he's got a, they've got a device down there in Panama. I see Guillermo's on, um, you know, so we've got an incredible tool and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, you, and I love it when it's like with, the uh, you know, Dr. Rankin, think outside the box, you know, trust yourself, listen to your inner guide, your system as you're, as you're dealing with your patients. And if you feel like you should go somewhere, muscle testing is great. If you're a good applied kinesiologist, it's great to give you another guide of where to go, but, you know, I've always kind of gone into inward awareness and said, geez, I wonder, you know, let me, let me try this point. So if something comes up to me while I'm treating, I go, you know, what's it going to take me a few seconds to put a probe on a spot that 
Well, the kidney kept showing up when I was doing an odontin. What if I just shoot through the kidney? You wouldn't have believed what happened after you treated my kidney. You know, so, so just think outside of the box. You've got a tool that first does no harm, you know, so you're not going to hurt anybody. That thing is, is powerful in what it does. I mean, you know, like they say, there's no placebo on a racehorse. And- I have, um, we've gotten an awful lot of help from you guys. And we want to make sure that we're also available to anybody else that's thinking about the Equiscope or has the Equiscope to feel free to, you know, get in touch with us to get some help. Um, because we got help to get where we are, and we want to help everybody else do the same thing. There's so many more people to to, to help than we, any of us have time to do it. But if we work together and share the ideas like you guys have orchestrated tonight, I mean, we could do this, you know, frequently, and we're very happy to help. I'm very happy to help anyone. Yeah, we're available. We can put your contact information and also the list of resources uh, in the email with the call recording. And Mike, I wanted to talk to you about a way to share some of the before and after heart rate variability and additional brain maps that you've done and even a system to continue to share that information uh, for our network. Okay, yeah, I can certainly. I mean, I don't I do not do uh, a lot of brain mapping stuff anymore. It's just kind of shifted a focus for me, but um, the heart rate variabilities, I can get you those all day long. Sure. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to, to just remove their personal information and, and share them, but if there's a way to do that. I can do screenshots uh, of just uh, the before and afters, and I'll just not get their name in there. Okay, wonderful. Sounds like a plan. Michael, you know, we have a software. We turn these things into a PDF file, which is one of the ways that they share the, uh, the yeah, data. Yeah, I think it attaches their name, yeah. I know, but I have a PDF editor. All we have got to do is take out the name. Oh, oh, okay. All yeah, right. I can put a big black thing right over the name and still get all the data. It shows the dates and the times. That that might be the way to do it, and we can share them freely. Okay. And we'll be happy to compensate, you know, for your next, for your time, for the orders or whatever else. We'll, we'll sure. work it out. All right. Well, I think you guys, uh, let me just say one more thing, if you don't mind. I think this, uh, doing this heart scientific test on, on people is really, really important because uh, we, besides the fact that they're walking out with pain and they're able to see better and all kinds of other things, when you demonstrate a test like this, and it's a very demonstrable test, it's got a lot of graphs, it's got a lot of color, it's got a lot of meaningful information that anybody would understand, uh, to have that kind of a system to monitor what you're doing and show people what you're doing and keep track of it, you know, we got to remember sometimes people forget how bad they were. And it's you know it's such a common thing. So uh, this is a this is a way to keep track of it. And uh, uh, so if you you know you want to do that sort of thing, we can help you figure that out. Can you share that information in detail to where we can access it? Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Hey, uh, this is Rich, and I'm out here in Southern California. I'm meeting with a with an executive cancer specialist. Uh, hopefully next week. Would you be open to? Uh, receiving a phone call from one of their physicians. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. And also, Rich, you know that as long as you set it up with Dr. Delaney ahead of time, Dr. Delaney has continually told me, just have them call. He's more than willing if you, you know, send him a text, are you available? Or when would you be available to speak to somebody? And he will take that time. I, you know, he is tireless in what he does. I mean, everybody's willing to share the information. You know, we're willing to, you know, answer all the questions because you know now to have a couple of hundred devices out there questions are being answered i just wanted to add that one of the things we're working on is having an online forum for the doctors uh now that intelbio.com is up uh the next phase in addition to an equine page aesthetics page is a an online forum for practitioners all right, thank you, everyone. Everybody have a great night. And if you don't have an echoscope, get one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Michael. Love you, son. All right. Love you too, Bye. Dad. Love all you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.